Welcome, traveler. Come warm yourself by the fire and let us regale you with mighty tales, tales of adventure, tales of heroism, tales of Tamriel. I am your host, Ajelos, and I am back for another amazing episode of Tales of Tamriel, and I'm joined by the one, the only, the guy who wishes he could be a sex bar. Yeah. Arganir. I do not wish such a thing. <laughs> yes, I you wish do. you would accept that your <laughs> two-handed tank build is useless, but that's not our point right now. <laughs> it is pretty much the entire point of the entire show, but still not for this episode. Uh, um, yeah, I'm here. Uh, I'm doing good. Uh, uh, <laughs> How are you doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. And in all, in, in to be completely candid here, I've honestly not tried my two-handed build since like I don't know. Shadows of the Hist, and they made <laughs> I mean, a lot of changes to how uh, uh, resources are gained. I don't know how it. How yeah, I it was useless it. before the changes, and oh. now that you're out of practice as well, I'm pretty sure it's pretty useless. Oh, okay, all right, yeah. I see how it is. Uh-huh. No, no, it's awesome. You're just jealous. Um, but yeah, so I have no idea where how I just got into this place, but I'm in here and I'm scared. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we are in game, and I am in the Gold Coast, just messing around, seeing what I can kill, because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> but let's see. Before we actually hop into our tales, I got to give a special shout out to two new patron supporters that we had this past. I think within the last two weeks, uh, but we missed a show last week, of which I apologize. Uh, stomach flu pretty much hit, and. That meant that no show happened. I don't think we put a single <laughs> podcast out, period. So, you know, that just that didn't happen. But a uh, special shout out to both General Cat and Owen Woods as our newest patron supporters. You guys are great. Uh, if you want to help support the Dungeon Crawler Network, as always, you can head over to patreon.com slash Dungeon Crawler Network. For as little as a dollar a month, you get all of our podcasts at least a day early. Uh, as well as being entered into our monthly raffle where we give away stuff, you know, whatever it is. Normally, it's either a DCN t-shirt or sometimes a game code, something like that. We'll see. Lots of fun stuff. And, of course, you get to help support what we do. Uh, of course, you can also subscribe to us over at twitch.tv slash Dungeon Crawler Network as well. And I want to thank the six subscribers that we now have. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. All right, Ark. It's time for tales. Yeah. All right, so um, well, I'm separating this into two sections. One is Elder Scrolls Online. One is, of course, Morrowind part, because I've been playing. Well, everything I do in terms of story comes from Morrowind late, and that is the classic Morrowind, by the way, not Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind, but Elder Scrolls Three Morrowind. Mm, the, so, good Morrowind. Um, the, <laughs> the good Morrowind. The yeah. the good Morrowind. The non microtransaction Morrowind. I don't think microtransactions even existed back in. I know it was <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, the the developers or marketing teams back then were like microtransaction. What? What is that? What is I mean, that? Why would we even do that? I know. Now, well, sadly, that's not the case. That's that's true. <laughs> it's very true. Anyway, um, so Elder Scrolls Online part is short because I'm just getting back into the game with the um, Halloween event, which is my. Which is the only event I like uh, out of Elder Scrolls Online events. Because you don't have to do dailies, but just, you know, yeah. kill monsters and that's fine. Um, so I've been doing that since this night, <laughs> basically. <laughs> um, I'm also still in game, just, you know, farming the Deshaun, World Boss, Dolman, and Del trio. Uh huh. Which is, I guess, the fastest. Um, well, not really, because they have a limit on the skulls that you can get, but still, it's the fastest way to farm some experience as well, at least in my opinion. Um, that said, I'm, I have two new build plans, which I am very happy to take advice from anyone who's listening as well, because I've been, as you would have been following away from Elder Scrolls Online for quite a while, and I'm not sure what changes has been made. Um... So yeah, the, uh, I can use some advice. So I have two neat build ideas. One is, both of them are tank, by the way. One is a debuff and buffing build for dungeons that I don't really need to survive, but rather, you know, 
it's a DPS race or something like that. Um, one of the pieces is Torux Pact. Actually, the one that gives you spell damage and things like that. But I need it for the fifth bonus, which is uh, which increases your infu um, enchantment weapon enchantment effect for forty percent or something like that. And the other piece is actually powerful assault, which is hard to get by because it's medium set, and I only can use it in jewelry and weapons, unfortunately. The idea is um, I'll have um, crusher and weakening traits on my weapons, buff them up with um, Torx Pact and then um, give people extra weapon damage and spell damage when I use power, um, aggressive Warhorn with powerful assault. So that's one of the ideas. Mm -hmm. The other one, the other set is a survival build for dungeons like <clears throat> uh, Bloodroot Forge or Falkreath Hall, you know, the difficult hardcore uh, veteran dungeons. And that is either Ebon set plus Plague Doctor, which I, I am farming right now, or Ebon set plus Brands of Imperium. Now the Brands of Imperium, I'm thinking, um, because the fifth bonus has a chance to give everyone a damage shield of like 15k every 15 seconds, something like that. And um, I thought maybe if I combine that with my ingenious shields from Dragon Knight, I could keep the shields up more... Um, I forgot the word. Well, I could keep more the shields consistently. Up. Yeah, more consistently. Yeah, because exactly. even if I run out of Magicka, um, Brands of Imperium could proc and give everyone shields still. But that needs some testing because the range for that is eight meters, and I'm not sure like how far that is. Mm. I mean, if it's too short, people won't get the shield anyway, so that might be useless. I don't know. I'm not. Yeah, I know what you mean. Eight eight meters. Uh, hold on. Let me let me just let me look at one of my skills here. And for uh, example, ingenious shields is twelve meters. Okay, here's here's a uh, eight by five. Um, you played a uh, you played a Templar before, at least a little bit. Nope. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Nope. Uh, biting jabs is an area of. Eight by five meters, so it goes about five meters as an attack. Okay, so it's just I'm slightly past. I'm looking at the stream that. right now. If you use it, uh, I can see probably. Okay, let me go find something to attack, and I'll show you. It, it's pretty much very close to melee range, like very hmm. close to melee range. It's actually eight meters. See, I'm up here against this guy right here. Eight meters would probably be right like this, like where that guy is from me. That's about eight meters right there when I'm fighting this uh, Minotaur mm. Shaman. That's eight meters. Where he's standing away from me is about eight meters. Yeah. So yeah. it's okay. it's pretty darn close to, you know, to melee range. Mm -hmm. Not completely, well, but very close. Yeah. It, so. it could still be useful. Oh, so the radius of... Yeah, Sloshy in chat says smaller than Caltrops, uh, and the radius of Caltrops are eight meters, so I can actually... Oh, here, I'll Hold just on. throw Caltrops down. And... Yeah, I just did the same. Oh, actually, um, just Well, those. actually, it's not too bad. Like, if it's, yeah, it's something like a stack and burn phase... Stack uh, and burn, it would be helpful, but if anyone's yeah. spread out, yeah, you're going to have a hard time with it. But, As I said, I mean, it, it requires some testing. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm I guess... I'm pretty sure, like, Ebon plus Plague Doctor will work anyway, uh, with lots of health and damage shields for the team, but mm -hmm. I don't know. No. I, I want to try some proc sets, so right. I guess I'll do that. And your stamina, so proc sets are kind of yeah. like the way to go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, I'm also switching, like, I'm thinking about getting prismatic runes for every piece of armor I have. Um, I'll lose some stamina in terms of resources, but I'll gain that back with health and magicka. Right. So that will give me, like, in total, 4K extra um, resources, which is not bad, actually. Yeah, no, and they're actually, I mean, they're not still not super cheap, but they're not as expensive as they used to be. Yeah, it's like 10K per, um, per enchantment if you buy it from a trader, but um, if you just get the rune and get it crafted, it's like 
7k per enchantment and that's not too bad nice and i, I have like i have to say for the chat room the only reason why your name got pronounced correctly is because ark said it had i said it <laughs> it would have been butchered <laughs> i don't know if i said it correctly either and he but... says he says you did so congrats oh yeah yeah well i'm, I'm happy because <laughs> usually i butcher the names as well i mean then again i have i have my um Excuse, you know, I'm not a native speaker if I butchered the name. I know, but you speak better <laughs> than I do, so that's okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much the Elder Scrolls Online part uh, okay. for now, but I'm, I'm thinking about getting back into the game. Okay. Oh, oh, I actually tried uh, running Veteran Crypt of Arts 2 today with Pugs. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Never again. Like it, it took away all my will for um, getting back into the dungeons. Uh, I mean, the healer was all right. The, the healer had no problems, but the DPS. I mean, there is one very simple rule: if someone's down, you as the DPS go and get them up. Entire dungeon, either healer or myself. Had to run to someone to revive them. I mean, there were there were times I had to tank a boss for like few minutes without my healer because <laughs> nobody would get him up, and then they would die get uh, as well. And I was like one, I was going one versus one with the boss to, while trying to locate the healer and get him up because the DPS just wouldn't do it. <laughs> ah, so frustrating. That's that funny. also reminds me, there is, there is a problem with European side Dungeon Finder. Um, there should be a land good selection as well. Because, I mean, if, you know, it's okay that someone doesn't know, you know, they are playing a DPS, maybe it's their first time, maybe they just don't know that they, they have to do the respawning, uh, reviving someone. But most of the time, uh, when you tell them, like, okay, this is your job, like, this is how dungeons go, um, this is how it's usually done. They agree and, you know, it's everything's fixed, but on European side, there are people from, well, all over the Europe, and some of them don't actually speak English, mm. um, since the game has localization and they can play, but they simply don't speak. And um, you can't communicate with them. Right. Like, one of the players today was Russian. I mean, I know very little Russian. I mean, I could probably communicate in a normal sense, but I, I don't know the gaming terms and or anything like that. So um, I did try with Google Translate, but that's a frustrating process as well. So yeah, I don't know, maybe you're copying like, it and taking it yep. over to Google. and Yeah. I, I mean, maybe something like, you know, um, a language selection for at least European side, maybe. Um, in Dungeon Finder could be um, could be a nice addition. I don't know if if, it, if it's possible to do something like that. But oh, it, it's totally so, possible. But I can i I mean, it's not saying anything against it because mm -hmm. I think it's actually a good idea. But the problem is, anytime you add any kind of filter, specifically if it's a hard language filter, like if if you're like English speakers only, that limits your your uh, selected pool, so your queue yeah. times will be longer. Then again, I'm a tank, so I always find a group. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yeah, that's true. Um, and it's, I think that's kind of their fear. I, I know with U.S. servers and stuff mm -hmm. like that, it's not as big of a deal because honestly, the only uh, the, I shouldn't say the only, but the two primary or primary languages spoken in the U.S. is actually English and, and Spanish. And most Spanish speakers speak both, so mm -hmm. that's not really a problem um, in most cases. But I know Europe, you know, specifically you guys, you have, what, six different languages that you probably come across very frequently? Well, there's Russian, Turkish, French, English, Spanish. I guess Italian and Spanish can understand each other to a degree, at least from what I know. There's German. Yeah. Um, there's Greek, although not Greek, I assume, would also speak English, I'm not sure. Might not be true. Um, and we already passed six, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. I mean, there's Swedish, there is... 
I mean, if you like, there's Scandinavian languages. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, there, there are a lot. There are a lot. In there's Europe. a lot of potential, you know, what you could get in there. But see, again, if you're one of those, um, one of the less popular, like, po I know German, they tend to have a lot of, uh, a lot of fans of the game and uh, French mm -hmm. as well. But if you're one of the, you know, other languages, like, uh, you know, like you said, Swedish, anything of that nature, if you're like, trying to get a group and that's all you speak oh that would be pretty yeah. difficult yeah and i mean that's not to say that i couldn't just click you know oh i'm i'm a swedish player and and that you know that's what i'm i'm speaking and i can't mm -hmm. find a group uh, i'll put it to english and i don't care what are they gonna do kick me i just won't say anything <laughs> yeah that is true and well. just be a, a random unsocial player you know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That just that was my thought anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it was just a thought, you know. It was just out of my frustration today. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on <laughs> I guess uh it could have been worse though, Ark. You very well could have been a um you know, with a group of players that did speak English and you try to tell them what to do and then they just were like, "No, screw you." So yeah, yeah. <laughs> at least with the the Russian, you couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's true. That's true. Also, yeah. I almost forgot the best part of my other scrolls online tales. Oh, okay. Which is what I call Wings of Fate, Raid Night, Heresy Extravaganza. <laughs> okay. So last week, um, I was awake for the show, but when Ag said, you know. Um, I'm sick and we can't do the show. I decided to join the raid group of um, because it's pretty much the same time. You know, the raid mm -hmm. night of uh, Wings of Fate is on the same time as we do the show. Uh, so I went there and there weren't enough people to do do a raid. So they decided to do like you know we should do the world passes and things like that. And when we were getting ready. I took a glimpse at the group, and people had like skeleton camels, or you know, Dromathra senche tigers, or you know, all all those limited time or crown crate mounts in Wings of Fate uh, party group members. So I thought, okay, let's let's um, you know, I would love this, so we should take a screenshot. And they said, should we only take the screenshot with these mounts? I said, wait, you have more. And suddenly, I saw. Like from four or five person there, I saw every limited time or crown crate only mount that was presented in the game. Like there were Dromathra ones, there were the elk ones, there were um, Dwemer, the Dwemer ones. There were, um, of course, the other people from around the place joined us as well. And there, like I've seen every single mount that is heresy to everything we speak here on Tales of Tamriel. And I was very happy and taking screenshots because I knew I could irritate Agnet. It, it's very <laughs> irritating. It's, it's like I come on this show every single week and denounce the heresy and the awful things of lockboxes and the crown store and people just seem to ignore it. <laughs> I'm right in your guild too. Like I right know, <laughs> right under your nose, things are things are not good. <laughs> no, it's not. It's you know, daddy's away, and then the kids burn down the house. That's pretty much what it is. It's really sad. Yeah. Speaking of burning down the house, sorry, I'm going to segue into this. Yeah. Uh, we'll let you continue your tales in a second, but this works great because I forgot about this. Um. If you are a part of Wings of Fate and you want to burn down a house, you just got to make it creepy because let me pull up my thing here because I just had it up and now I don't have it oh, up. Oh, right. Yeah, I want to announce this. So it is the Macabre Cottage Contest that we are doing for Wings of Fate members only. You must be part of this guild on the North American PC Mega Server. So sorry to all of our console fans and stuff like that. I know we had a few people ask us on console uh, if they could get into it, and I said, well, to be honest, the prize, there's no way we'd be able to get you the prizes because they're all in game stuff. We're giving away gold and things like that. And none of us have, you know, PS4 or Xbox accounts. So, um, but anyway, 
This is open to all guild members that are invited to participate in the Witches Contest. Enter, you must decorate either a small home or an apartment adorned in a spooky, gloomy, morbid, dark, or, you know, some other very creepy style. Uh, it's one entry per person. Uh, if you need help, we have plenty of guild members who can help you craft quite a bit of this different stuff. Uh, the prizes for, for a small home. The first prize is one attunable station for crafting plus 200,000 gold. Second place is three regular crafting stations plus 100,000. Uh, that is in the small home category. And in the apartment category, it is one gold furnishing and 200k. And for second place, it is one regular crafting station and uh, 100k. Uh, the prizes will increase as more participants we have. Uh, tier 2 cash prizes uh, unlock at 10 people and tier 3 unlocks at 20, which you'll see if you check out the notes here. This is all in our Discord, by the way. So if you're not part of our Discord, please join that and look at the pinned messages. Um, so this started on October 16th and will end on October 29th, which is next Friday. Okay. Um, let's see. Judging will be held and winners will be announced around 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. Eastern on the 29th because we are going to do it live on the show. Ooh, nice. Uh, the three know. judges are myself, Arkaneer. Guess what, Ark? You got volunteered. What? Yep. No, you don't get. Okay. Yeah, you get. I was just thinking, like, I should. Oh, I should participate as well. <laughs> nope, you're a judge no, and okay. Stormlord. So there are some <laughs> details. Check it out in our Discord for the full list. There is a list of qualifying homes, so make sure you are decorating one of those aforementioned homes. And like I said, the winners we will announce. We'll actually do that next week. So next week's show is going to be in game, and it's going to be Ark and I running around looking at all the different uh, entries. See what we have. Nice. So, yeah. That'd be cool. All right, Ark, you may continue, but I forgot about that, and I should have said it at the top of the show, and I didn't. Because <laughs> well, I forgot I mean, about you could, it. You could edit it there as well after after it, if you want. I, I could have. That's a lot of work. Yeah. That's just um, that's a lot of work. Yeah. So, basically, Wings of Weight, Heresy Night, with every month. And as I was saying, like, um, you stopped me where you would hate it most, actually. Oh, uh, maybe that while was... While everyone were doing their, like, space animations with the mounts, and I saw that, you know, the Dwemer, um, the Great Dwemer no. mounts do, like, a lightning thing, lightning charge thing. It looked so cool. I, I blurted out, like, oh, man, it looks so cool. And of course, everyone called called me out on that because, you know, Ark, <laughs> Ark, you're on this show, Ark. You you can't know, think that. You're not allowed but to think it, it that. It does look cool. <laughs> Kudos to the developers that actually sat down and made those. <sighs> but still, we still denounce them. No, yes, we no do. Change there. Yes. <laughs> But yeah, um, that happened, and I got to irritate Ag just as I'm doing right now. So <laughs> that's a win for me, at least. Yeah, no, it's working well, working real well. I told him you should kick everyone in there. <laughs> I mean, you you annoy me with this explorer build. I I get you back, get back at you with something like this. Uh, as Daddy Dank says in chat, no opinions differing from me are allowed. <laughs> I'm glad he's starting to see this. You know, that's how it works. Uh, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. So that was, let me check the notes just in case. Yeah, that was the end of my Elder Scrolls Online part. Okay. Now, obviously, I've been continuing my um, Elder Scrolls 3 Morum journey as well, which I'm playing for the first time. And again, I have a love hate relationship for the game because it's so frustrating. Like, it's so good. And the fact that it is so bad in terms of gameplay and things like that, you know, it being old, makes it funny as well, makes it hilarious as well. But man, it's frustrating. Um, so what I've been doing um, is, last time, like last episode, I mentioned that I was trying to find the sixth house base, kill this Dagoth someone guy who is a priest of Dagoth Ur or something like that. 
So I actually got to do that. Uh, thank you for uh, the follows, both uh, Isavold and Vanilla Bean. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I just started getting <laughs> notifications. Like, beep. Yeah. I mean, I can see them, so it's... Yeah, you'll, you'll see them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I actually got to find the sixth house base, which was, you know, inside this island, ruins, or whatever it was. Um, and I... I kept getting attacked by these naked Dunmers and naked Ash Slaves. For some reason, everyone is naked. I don't know. Um, <laughs> what I mean, is it with you finding everyone naked? Like, this I happens to you in, like, every game you play. I don't know. Like, I entered this six-hour space, and what I'm expecting is, like, guards with, you know, like, ordinator armor style guards or whatever. And instead, what I find is... Naked Dunmers just attacking me. <laughs> lots and lots of naked Dunmers is charging me. I mean, yep. I'm fine with nakedness. That's no problem there. My Nord is always naked. But it's a Nord. I don't appreciate naked Dunmers. I appreciate naked Nords. Uh, That's right. So it takes a while, but I eventually survive that. Uh, and get to this Dago Reed Sky. I don't remember his second, second name, the other name. And he looks like an anteater. Like, he, he has, like, elephant, ka, anteater kind of nose or whatever. It's, okay. It's, like, he's very deformed. And right. um, he dies pretty easily, though. I expect a boss fight, but he just died easily. But as he dies, he makes a very good point. Like, um, Nerewar, and actually, I'm going to ask about lore here. Okay. Um, He's, they keep saying, especially this priest keeps saying, you know, Dagoth Ur would like to welcome me as a friend, not an enemy, for all time's sake, because, you know, before all this tribunal stuff happened, you and Dagoth Ur were friends, he was your, um, sir, like, friend and, um, loyal, you know, general or something like that. So basically, mm -hmm. Dagoth Ur and Nerewar was friend, but what I don't remember is, who was Dagoth Ur in all this, like, we, okay, um, Vivek, Almalexia, Solacils are the ones that use Hor um, Lorcan's heart to achieve divine, divine power, and Nerevar Indoril is the one that, okay, that said, you know, let's not do this, and ended up getting killed. Well, um, see, here's the thing. You're, you're missing one part of that, that group, which was Dagathur. He was part of that group. After the Battle of Red Mountain... And they entered the Red Mountain and found the heart of Lorcan. They were torn mm. on what to do with it. And yep. obviously, uh, uh, Sothasil, Vivek, and Amalexia wanted to use it. Uh, and, yep. and, uh, Nerevar was kind of like, eh, I don't know about that. Dagath Ur was actually kind of a little bit of an instigator saying like, you know what? I kind of agree with you. We probably really shouldn't, shouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Like that, mm -hmm. it, he's like, but I'll stay behind and I will watch over it while you try to decide what to do. And at that point, that's when he marched back down the mountain, uh, and, and convened with Amalexia and Sothasil and Vivek. And was trying to decide on what to do. So, Dagath Ur was one of the people who was at the Battle of Red Mountain. And after they found it, Dagath Ur remained in Red Mountain and watched mm -hmm. over the heart, eventually, you know, succumbing to it. Okay, so um, everyone in Morrowind is like, Dagath Ur is evil. Dagath Ur is, you know, terrible. Evil. So he's not actually evil or terrible. He's just against tribunal. Well, yeah, more or less. But um, he is using it for some nefarious purposes, which you'll 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 see as ah, uh, okay. as it goes on. Um, but yeah, it, it, he one of the reasons why he he's per, you know portrayed as evil is because he is running contrary to. Um, to you know what the tribunal who are the living gods are saying so yeah he's he's looked upon as as a heretic okay so but he's not really you know at least from what i know at, at this part is not really evil yeah i guess from, i'll figure out as i go right 
So yeah, I, uh, he he's like you know that priest is like you know Dagothur wants to welcome you as a friend, not an enemy, and things like that. And just as he says that, he also puts a curse on me, which is called corpus disease. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Now this disease makes me dumber and dumber. Like, I get more dumb. And yep. my character is, you know, kind of a battle mage. Without oh. my spells, I can't really do anything. I mean, I can use an axe pretty easily, but still, like, it's not as good as throwing fireballs around. Right. And right. I'm, like, become unable to use all my spells. And eventually, my willpower hits zero. I mean, do you know what happens when your willpower hits zero? I don't know what happens in-game, but if your willpower is zero, that means if someone says, okay, go jump from that window, and you do it because, you know, you <laughs> don't have willpower. You're essentially yeah. a zombie, which is kind of yeah, what you are because you're right. living dead. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like get dumber and dumber, and my willpower gets zero and things like that. And um, I'm trying to find a cure. But first, you know, obviously... Having done the quest, I get back to um, Caius to turn in the quest. Now, um, since I can't cast any spells and my magicka is so low and things like that, and it is impossible to rest in the city, right. because for some reason it's illegal to rest anywhere civilized in... Um, <laughs> it's because it's owned by someone? And you're like, you can't rest here. No, you, you don't own like, this bed. You can't even rest on the street. Like they, It's illegal. What kind of capitalistic design uh, that is? Uh, I'm I mean, actually glad you... you <laughs> I'm glad you said capitalistic, because I was going to say, actually, technically, it kind of is illegal to, you know, like, sleep outside. <laughs> um... Yeah. Well, I don't. I. I mean, it says rest. It says resting here is illegal. Imagine, like you are, you've been walking for like half an hour in the city, and you just lay your back to a building. You know, taking a break, catching a break, uh, ca catching a break, and a police comes. Like, okay, it's illegal to rest here. You have to buy a bed. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah actually, so that might happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> It depends on, uh, yeah. It really, it, it, there's a few things it depends on, but yeah, it's <laughs> not uncommon that you know a police officer would come along, and be like, "All right, move along," you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess maybe uh, never, never happened here from what I know, but <laughs> yeah. it is what it is. Anyway, so uh, basically, I have to rest in Caius' bed. Okay, yeah, okay, again, all right. Our, our, our muscular, naked, imperial spy master. Um, but it is what it is, I get a rest, you know, because my health and everything is so low, um, and I can't heal myself because I'm, at that point at least, a dumb dunner uh, <laughs> because of the disease. So uh, I sleep in Caius's bed, and I get woken up by a zombie. A, a ash zombie or whatever uh, attacks me. Now, I don't have any magicka, I don't have any health, I cannot defend myself, so I look to Caius. You know, I mean, I'm getting murdered in your bed by a zombie, and he just stands in the corner, like, he's standing in the corner with his classic smirk on his face, <laughs> again, half naked, and just stares at me while I'm getting murdered. I'm like, okay, I mean, jeez. Man, Caius is some least... kinky stuff, man. Yeah, I mean, you could have at least helped. Um, wow. But being Caius, you know, he's a spy master. I'm like, maybe that's his thing. He doesn't interfere with anything, you know, taking a ancient vow or something. I try sleeping again. The zombie attacks again, and I basically just run out, get out of the door, thinking, you know, Caius would deal with it, right? <laughs> Daddy Dank in uh, chats, like, that's some fan art time. I agree. <laughs> I would love to see a, like, Arkanir being strangled by a zombie while a half-naked Caius watches with a smirk on its face. Someone has to make Please, that Please, someone do this. You, just someone out there has to do this. Uh, I will love you forever if you do. Um, yeah, no, definitely this has to happen now. Like, I, I can't think of anything more important than what, what just happened. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Anyway, um, I, I, I leave the zombie with Caius, and I just ran out, because I know what, what to do. Like, Caius, before I went to sleep, Caius said, um, there is this Talvani mage. 
um, that may be able to help you with that. Um, you know, he works on this corpus disease. He's a super tell anime age and things like that. So I go ahead and try to find this guy. Uh, he's called, apparently this guy is very famous as well, I don't know, he's just a typical Talwani to me. He's called Divath Fear. Mm -hmm. uh, later I learned that he is actually a very important character in Morrowind or in Tamriel, but I don't care because he's a Dunmer. He actually um, makes an appearance uh, in Morrowind in ESO. Yeah, I heard that, but I haven't seen him myself yet, but I, yeah. I heard that. Um... So he basically wants me to bring back, like, I, I go meet him. Uh, he has a dungeon full of zombies that are infected with corpus disease. I don't know why, but he has. So he wants me to go ahead and bring him some Dwemer boots that a Dwemer made. And apparently this guy has the last Dwemer yeah. locked up in his corpus disease dungeon. Um, so I go there. I find the guy, and he's definitely not like what I expected. He's just... He looks like Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, except on a Dwemer spider mount. But Which actually makes the Dwemer mounts that they released with Morrowind probably one of the most lore... Uh, <laughs> lore... Spe or I don't want to say lore specific, but uh lore appropriate mounts we've ever seen in, that they've added since you know they started that doing all sense, these mounts yeah. <laughs> yeah it's it's funny that the one mount that's like one of the most crazy is actually mm. the one mount that you're like huh that actually <laughs> kind of works pretty much yeah yeah um so yeah i um i get the boots from that guy and bring it back, and Caius finally, you know, gives me a potion that actually cures my... Well, actually, it doesn't cure my corpus disease. What it does, it, it gets rid of the, um, um, the symptoms, so I don't get dumber anymore. But, you know, corpus disease gives you an ability, like, it makes you immune to all other diseases, which is one of the prophecies of um, Nerevarine. And the potion he gives me gets rid of all the bad effects, but I, I'm still, like, immune to all diseases. Right. So I'm, like, happy. Okay, uh, this worked out fine. Um, I can go back to Balmora and, you know, let Kais know that I'm cured. So I use my big jump spell, which I made, which allows me to jump for large amounts of distances. Uh, most of the time I end up dead on landing, but um, at least it gets me around quickly. So I get back to Balmora, and at this time, at this point, it's like five days passed since I left, you know, Caius's house, going to the Tower of Devathir, getting cured and things like that. It's been like five days. And I'm happy, and I go back into Caius's house, and guess what I see? The zombie is still there, and the Caius is still standing there. He just doesn't care. <laughs> zombie is not attacking Caius either, and Caius isn't doing anything about the zombie either. They're just standing in the house for five days. Caius being half naked as usual with a smirk. And yep. zombie being obviously a zombie naked as well. I don't know what happened there um, for five days. Fun um, time. And uh, thank, you for the, <laughs> thank you for the follow, uh, Cod Bylan. Thank you. Uh, and um, basically, you know, I, I accept my fate, I kill the zombie, and I speak to Caius, you know, I'm cured and things like that. Yeah, And yeah. Caius finally gives me one final assignment and lets me know that he is actually leaving Morrowind to go back to the mainland. Now, I don't know what he lived in that five days with the zombie again, but he, he decided to, like, go back to the mainland, so again, I don't know, it's Caius. <laughs> Uh, things may have happened. Um, so he's just, you know, I got called back, I have to go to the mainland, and now you are one of the agents here that, you know, um, has, hmm, what would be the word, authority, I guess. Um, so I basically become a ranking officer-ish something in Morrowind for the Blades. Um, and the last thing he asks me to do is to find, um, oh, I forgot his name. The guy, uh, Caius's agent in um, Temple of Vivek. The 
Imperial or Breton guy, um, the scholar. I... Mero Milo, I think, something like that. Sounds something, familiar. Something Milo. Yeah. Sounds familiar. Um, so I have to break him out in the truth, which apparently the quest was way above my level at that point because I kept dying a lot. Like it took me about thirty minutes of trying in, uh, on stream. Um, hey, Code Blen. Um, he's my friend from RL. So. <laughs> oh, awesome! <laughs> seeing chat. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, what I basically did when I realized that I can't actually break him out, I just casted cast, casted levitation spell on myself, and every NPC that is trying to kill me bugged out, and I eventually got him out like um, like that, and decided that I would take the main quest aside for a bit because obviously I need to level up. And someone in chat says because I've been complaining about my speed, like how it is too slow to travel around. He mentions Boots of Blinding Speed. Now that's my main issue with Morrowind. You are so slow. So I actually go ahead and try to find this Boots of Blinding Speed. What I, ex what I expect is that, you know, it's so fast that you actually hit the walls or something like that, hence why it's blinding. Right. What I get, the boots, while fortifying your speed by a lot, it also has blinding enchantment on it. So you basically actually really can't see anything when you put on <laughs> So you're just completely and, blind while you're running yeah, through. Yeah, it's pitch black screen. You can only see your minimap uh, on the lower left corner. That's it. That's it's awesome. It's a full pitch black screen. Um, and this is actually one of the things of why I love Morrowind because... Like that's that's stupid and it's still it's still in the game and it's hilarious. I love it. And finally, as for last, you know how you said you find all the naked people in other scrolls? You found another one? I found the naked Nord. And just as I was saying, you know, um how I was you know, just as I was talking about how I, my nords are usually naked and I find naked nords and things like that, I turned around turn around the corner and there it is. Just as I was saying that, a naked Nord just standing there. Like a divine sign that naked Nords, you know, it's a it's sign of divinity. Just right there, standing. So I appreciate It's a beautiful approach. sight, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has all the tattoos and he's muscular yep. and yeah, yep. it's, it's, a, it's a proper naked Nord. Yep, yep. Um, I, I approached him and he's like, uh, you know, um, I was traveling with this witch, and you know he put a paralyzer spell on me and stole my you know, everything. Would you help? I was like, okay. I mean, this guy probably deserved it, being an orc, but yeah, why not? Yeah, you know. Yeah, because he also mentioned like he has a special axe, and kind of wanted that axe as well. Um, so I go ahead and find the switch, and she also confirms that you know the Nord got too handy, and um, I put a spell on him, and as a punishment, you know, as a lesson, I took his stuff. Um, so I given a choice, like I could either side with the Nord or side with the witch. So first, I side with the Nord, kill the witch, um, and Nord, and get the axe from the witch. And then this naked Nord friend of mine says, you know, okay, give the axe. And I think, uh, maybe not, because I need an axe. So I end up killing the Nord as well. Uh, Aww. But see, I mean, I'm playing as a Dunmer on Morrowind. Because of, you know, we are supposed to be in Erebrine or something like that. Um, I yeah. decided to go with a Dunmer. So, you know, I thought, let's not break character just because I love naked Nords. Um, you know, so and stick with the character. So I killed him. But, yeah, I mean, I found... A naked Nord, just as I was t talking about a naked Nord, and it was divine. It was. And that's the yep. end of my tales for this week. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, wow. That was a lot. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Let's see. I got to pull up my notes because I quite have a lot of notes myself, actually. Um, let's just throw them over here so I can read them while I'm working. There we go. All right, so obviously some of the first things I was trying to get back in uh, to ESO as well, just just like Ark. Um, 
as a note, if anyone is interested, Monday nights are now my ESO streaming nights where I'll get on and actually do stuff. Um, the past, let's see, last Monday it was kind of interesting because I finally unlocked Dark Brotherhood, which I'll, I'll get to eventually. But it was just funny because while I was streaming, Meows, Meows Bark, uh, one of our uh, faithful um, faithful listeners, active members in our community, as well as one of our Twitch subscribers, uh, she was egging me on to kill people. I mean, mm-hmm. I was like a massive serial killer by the end of this. I, as soon as I got Blade of Woe, it was it was over for pretty much anyone I could <laughs> sneak up on. It was, it was dark. It was a dark time, and things happened. Let's just put it that way. Lots it, of souls were sent to cities that day. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, white everywhere. That's weird. What is this? Oh, I know who this person is. Fair enough. All right, cool. So anyway, as I was saying, I started off and I I hop back in the game and I'm like, so what am I going to do? I try to pick up where I left off. And where I left off was tons and tons of master writs. Like, I probably had like 12 of them in my bag that I had to start going through. Um... So I started hammering through all these master writs, and I got tons. Uh, and I forgot where Kag- uh, Kagnarak's Hope was, um, like where the, the station was. Hmm. Uh, but it was fine because Robot Dancer in the guild, she says, why don't you just follow me? Just travel to me. And she brought me to one of her uh, guildies' houses. And while I was in here, I was looking around doing whatever, and I found that this person has everything. They literally made this house, and they have everything. All right, let me let me put this out. Everything. <laughs> they have all these attunable ones. They have every single um, thing in the game. Every single craftable thing in one house it was probably the most amazing thing i've ever seen it was just it was awesome um you are going robotic at least for me so should you try dropping the call and restart it yeah i can do that there we go we're gonna go ahead and restart this voice call start call there we are all right How's that? Any better? All right, it's it's good. All right, like cool. every every day around this time, like around three a.m. to six a.m., my connection gets wonky for some reason. I don't know why, um, but it happens. So oh, I hope okay. it'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Well. Cool. Um. So yeah, that was that was definitely a fun one while I was running around doing all that because it it was just amazing. So then while I'm working on that, I realize crud. I don't have a style motif for one of the things that I need to get, right? Like, I'm looking everywhere, and I can't find it. It's It just sucks. It was the Order of the Hourglass Shield motif, uh, and I was mm. everywhere. I, could, I just could not find it. Like, anywhere I went, just could not find this thing. I eventually got so sick of it, I'm like, that's it, I give up. Uh, but... Another one of our guildies, uh, Lord Obi himself, so shout out to Obi, was able to find it, and he sent it to me, so I was able to finish that crafting motif, so that was really cool. Um, offloaded tons of banked gear on the guild store. This was because we hit that point where, with transmutation, which we'll talk about, you know, uh, I think it's in our news a little later, um, we hit a point where with transmutation, it doesn't matter anymore. Like I've been saving all of these different set bonuses and stuff like that. Um, yeah. If it had a good trait, I threw it in my bank. You know, and it could have been for anything. Like literally any set. I'm like, who knows? I may never use it, but in case I do, I'll just save it, right? Because you know how hard it is when you want to finally get a set, and then you go, oh great, I got to farm all the right <laughs> traits. It's, it's just a pain. So I said, screw it, and I just started saving everything. Well, now with transmutation coming, it doesn't matter, especially not for me, because I am a master crafter, and I have nine of nine in every single trait, like on every single piece of gear. That's not a problem. 
So I wasn't really worried in, in that regard, right? So I'm like, fine. And I started offloading to free up bank space because in reality, I'm not going to need it any longer mm-hmm. because so much of my time was trying to get the right traits. I don't necessarily need to worry about them now because they're fairly easy to get, you know? Because yeah. now I just any piece of gear I'll be able to change. And again, I mean, we are not sure how easy it will be to get because you'll still need to, you know, um, farm the transmutation crystals. Very true, but I still feel like it's going to be a heck of a lot easier than um, uh, <laughs> farming the right trait unless you get lucky, right? For me, maybe. With your RNG, I wouldn't be sure. Well, you know, that is <laughs> that is true. There is that. But, I mean, I kept some of the stuff that was a little more rare. So, like, if it was, a like, a gold or something or I got from a trial, I kept it. But otherwise, I was just like, all right, it's, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll leave it go. And, 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 I, and I left it. Um, let's see. Uh, and as part of this, I started listening to the Elder Scrolls, uh, the Elder Lore podcast again to try to get myself, you know, hyped up and playing the game. Uh, which that always, that always helps whenever I listen to the Elder Lore podcast. So that was what I've been doing, uh, in my off time recently. Let's see. Um, so the past few weeks, I've been doing a, Rothgar are bust stream pretty much like every night. Uh, I did finally finish Rothgar, but um, I was doing that almost every night trying to finish it up because it was, <laughs> well, you know, I was, I thought, <laughs> I thought I was near the end. Like I had to be super close. Um, it turns out that I was a lot farther than I thought I was, even though I only had like two items on the map that weren't unlocked. I still had a ton <laughs> of, of quests that still needed to be done. Like a lot uh, of guard though. Like the last massive content DLC, isn't it? Like, every other content zone DLC ki- that came after Hrothgar was very small in comparison, at least. Yes, yeah, Hrothgar was definitely one of their crowning achievements when they started doing DLC. But then again, we also know that Hrothgar was one of the things they were working on when the game was still sub-only, and mm-hmm. it just didn't get pushed out in time. So they had a lot of time to work on it. So let's see here. So one of the first things I had to do is I had to enter a place called Morkel's Descent to save an orc. And I have here, and let me, let me write down or tell you exactly what I wrote down very quickly. Um, and, and this is important. Entered Morkel's Descent to save an orc who will never find a husband if she doesn't behave according to her mother. It's funny <laughs> because when I'm, I'm talking to this, this lady, this orc, she's like, yep. My daughter ran off again. She's never going to find herself a good orc husband if she doesn't start, you know, behaving like a good young lady. And it just <laughs> made me laugh because it's one of those one of those stories again. You know, it's like you're you're never going to get yourself a good husband if you don't if you don't stop with your crazy ideas. It's like some movie from like the 50s or something like that. I mean, what what is the normal behavior for a daughter of a orc i'm assume well you know that it's a very good question because did she not behead the other clans people perhaps is, is, not is, 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 maybe she should have yeah yeah um it was actually funny because while i was playing her and she was following around with me Thais came down and looked and she's like huh i'm like what what's huh she goes that orc i'm like yeah what about the orc like, she's kind of hot I'm like, okay, if tusks are your thing, I mean, apparently she likes orcs to the point where <laughs> she finds them to be rather attractive. Um, I mean, she wasn't an unattractive orc. Uh, she had a little bit of mascara thing going on, so you got a little bit of eyeshadow. I mean, it. it she, she was attractive orc. I, I, I got to admit that, but I don't really know if I'd say she was hot. She was attractive for an orc. 
But, you know, that's kind of like saying, you know, that's fast for a Prius. You know, it's like, well, there you go. Right? I don't know. Anyway, so I also went, and I'm just going to kind of rapid fire through these because, again, I was a lot farther away from finishing this quest than I actually thought I was. Um, because it was just so long. Um, so I have here that I aided Clan Morkel. And it was, what was interesting about that is you go and you go into the sealed tomb, right? And as you're going in there, you're tr you're following another lady who, uh, you know, is trying to, um, trying to find out about her ancestry and why her, why her ancestors left their ancient home in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns out, like, after you go through all of it, and, like, there's all these creepy books, and, like, what was happening, like, people were getting, like, sacrificed, and it turns out that these guys, obviously, they were some of the best for uh, blacksmiths that the orcs had. Well, the reason why they abandoned their old heritage was they eventually got fed up with their leadership who was it was a blood forge they were sacrificing people in order to empower their you know their blacksmithing that's what they were doing mm -hmm. they were you know through whatever mystical um practices they were using the blood and souls of others to strengthen their weapons so it it's neat because she after she finds out she's essentially horrified but she doesn't know what to do she's like well this is my family you know my clan's heritage what do we do about this do we do we embrace the blood forge do we not like and uh it, it was interesting because you get to choose what you want to do yep. like do do you want them to keep the hammer um obviously it's uh it was used in blood forging it's very powerful it's probably an issue uh, or do you want to, you know, hide it? And we actually decided not to hide it, but to not use the hammer, but not to tell, you know, not to not to coddle her people, to actually tell them, like, yeah, our clan was pretty bad people, but we moved above <laughs> this, you know? like, And that's why we're not going to go back. Um, so they were going to hide the hammer at some point somewhere else. Let's mm. see. I think I went with the same option. I'm not sure though. It's been a while. Mm. Needed some water. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, in the far North, there is a shipwreck cove that you have to go into, right? And, uh, a ship floundered on the ice. And what's neat is because one of our old friends is back from the Daggerfall Covenant storyline, Scordo the Knife. Do you remember Scordo? Well, see the guy with the harpy problem? Yes. Oh, yeah, I remember him. Yes. <laughs> Scordo the Knife. Uh, kind of a sarcastic, smart little... Uh, I was going to use a derogatory term there for orc, but I'm not going to. Um, and, yeah, he... he yeah, he's one of my favorite from that crew that you first meet, like in Belk or, or Belk Earth and all these other areas. So, um, yeah, he, it's nice that they actually added in a few of these oh. these members, and Scordo is one of those. Oh um, yeah, I mean, I, I love recurring NPCs. Right? Yeah, definitely. Me too. Good. Now, here's something. I also met another guy who asked me, "Can you go find?" Um, a pendant that I lost for my betrothal in, in the, in the ship, right? Like it got lost. Now I can't do anything. So I'm sitting there thinking to myself, all right, fine. You know, I'll do it. Whatever. I don't care. So I decided to go ahead and help the guy out. I found it. And then when you go to take it back, there's another lady who has the quest mark. You go to talk to her. And she's like, that's my pendant. Did that other guy say that it was his? You know, like, that it's not his, it's mine. And you actually listen to both their stories, and apparently it was, her story was that it was given to her, right? Um, by her family, and him, uh, you know, she kinda, 
kind of fell under the sway. This is a debonair guy here, you know. He was kind of a sweet mm-hmm. talker, and they had a little bit of a relationship. Uh, but here's the thing. Um, you know, he he uh, eventually got bored of her and left or whatever, and, and she tried to steal the necklace. Now, the guy comes up and says, nope, that was for my, my fiancé, my betrothed, and, you know... This other lady just wants to get back at me because we got intimate now that I'm back home and I have a you know a fiance that uh, I'm not gonna not gonna marry her. So you get to decide who to give it to. And obviously, I'm sitting there going, "All right, this guy's kind of a jerk." Because let's think about this. First off, if if it's you know like who's telling the truth because you never really know. So. You have the yeah. one lady who says it's hers and that the guy just wants to steal it, okay, and make, you know, quick money off of it. She could be lying, right? But then you I have the other guy who says it was his betrothed. Now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, you're right. He could be lying too. But even if he's telling the truth, he's still sleeping around on his fiance while he's <laughs> on the boat. So I think at the very least she gets to keep the necklace. And so even if she's not telling the truth, and, you know, maybe maybe while he's saving money to buy another one, he should think about whether or not he wants to be in that relationship in the first place. So Makes sense. Yeah, and, that, and that's kind or, of my or, rationale. What or, or, or what? You can just keep dependent. <laughs> or I can just keep it. None of you get it. Yeah, that should have been the way. Um, and uh, as uh, um, they say in chat... Uh, I cannot speak tonight. My tongue's all tongue-tied. Uh, the guy seems like a creep to me. Yeah, I got that vibe, too. Like He was a total creep. So, at the very least, even if it wasn't hers and she was just trying to take it to get back at the guy, well, the guy probably shouldn't have been sleeping around. <laughs> so, you know, I think he had it coming regardless of whether or not he was telling the truth or not. So, yeah. Uh... Oh, Stibbins. I uh, ran across Stibbins again. And uh, poor Stibbins. Poor, poor, oh, God. poor Stibbins. Uh, you have to check Discord. Uh, dragon memes. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Linked dragon meme. <laughs> that is the best Kai's face I've seen. Yeah, yeah, that is Daddy Dank with the uh, meme we requested later. Check the official or our official Discord. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Rar. Oh my goodness! I, I, I mean, love this picture. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much how I think it went. Yeah, well, that seems incredibly accurate. I'm not gonna lie. Seems incredibly accurate. Actually, can I even say... I'm going to copy link. I am going to post this in the Twitch chat for those <laughs> who want to see it. Um, I honestly don't even know what to say at this point. It's probably the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so there you go, guys. That's uh, It's just amazing. That's, that's what I'm going to say. Uh, I don't want to go too much into poor Stibbins because his stuff is, is that entire quest. Like I, I love doing the Stibbins quest because of what happens to him, (laughs) but he gets treated like crap. Oh, so if you haven't done Rothgar yet, definitely check out Rothgar just for the Stibbins quest. (laughs) Um, ah, okay. I did figure out what this was. When I wrote this down, I have a note saying that I finished all the relics for the, you know, the house of whatever relic or whatever it was, but I still didn't get my costumes. Like, I'm like, what is going on here? Why did I not get my costumes? Uh, here, apparently, Robot Dancer came to the rescue, and she's like, well, it doesn't really tell you, and I know the when you look in the, when you look in the, um, Achievement, it just says you get the costume for finishing that achievement. Well, you don't. There's a lot Mm. of other 
things you need to do. Like you need to do like all 40 quests. You need to finish the main storyline. There's a hidden relic that only comes up after you finish the main storyline. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot to it. And, uh, more than what I, more than what I thought was there. And, um, yeah. So at first I was a little confused, but in the end, it turned out that I, I was I was okay. It just took me a minute. See, that's to cool it out. though. Like a hidden relic that comes only after you complete all the quests and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Those are the things I would like to do for a costume. I agree. I agree. That was it was very neat and it was a a cool story, a little bit of lore to it. Like definitely a little bit of lore. It was really good. Um and I really, really enjoyed it. So I mean yeah, I I I think it was definitely really good. Um I found Darian Gutierrez's letter. Cuz we Yeah, there's a letter. He actually has a letter that you find while doing um the very final quest, the very final quest. Um mm. when you're looking trying you're in a room, right? And you're trying to yep. get to the to the the moot the chieftain's moot before you know uh the king can do his plan which by the way uh, the 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 storyline is like game of thrones level like political intrigue for rothgar it is amazing and i definitely the entire time like when I got up to that part, when I found out about King Kurog and all what was going on, I could not stop playing. It was like 2 in the morning. I'm like, I don't even know how long I got to go yet, but nope, we're, we're still going. Nope, can't stop now. It was fantastic. It was probably one of the best quests they've done in this game so far that, that I've done. The, the storyline involving all of them is absolutely amazing and uh, yeah you just you just need to do it like it's just that freaking good um yeah i know it's like wow right but no it really is it is that freaking good like i just i flip and love it it's absolutely amazing um but yeah so while you're in there trying to get to the moot and you're making your way through uh, you have to read all these different books and they give you clues. And one of them, it's a blank book, but you see hand scribbling from Darian saying, you don't realize how hard this is when you're trying to contact someone you can't reach. Can anyone hear me? Is anyone out there? You know, um, it's, it's actually really, really fascinating. So yeah, you actually do get little hints about where Darian, uh, is, I guess is the, proper term so because you don't actually see him after cold harbor after that one of quest in cold harbor where you're um where you're i guess i'm trying to think when you're trying to fight off all the different enemies with the last alien king and all the people are there trying to fight him off and he's holding the portals he disappears at that point like he stays behind in order to make sure you make it through the portal and he never follows after. So, um, can you still hear me, Ark? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you hear me. Ah. There we go. There we go. Oh, cool. I, don't know yeah, I got... did the thing again. Ah, okay, that's really weird. I tried leaving the call and joining back in, but it didn't help. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so we're back. you gotta drop the call altogether. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. All right, uh, I don't really want to go into too much detail uh, of the final quest, only because it is so good, and I really want people I wanna, to expect I, I still it. need to do it. Oh, you still haven't done it? No. Oh, my. <laughs> Uh, now, see, I haven't done Marwyn, and there's a lot of nostalgia there for me. But as of right now, that quest is like that entire chain, but specifically like the final quest is is my favorite in the game. It is, it's it's so good, Ark. 
It is so very good. So it, everyone says the same, so I guess I... I might do it over the weekend. Yeah. Um, it is... It, it really is. It is my favorite quest line in the game. It is really, really good. So, yeah, I, I definitely encourage you to uh, to check it out if you haven't done it already. Mm-hmm. I, I really think you'll enjoy it. Really? Yeah. Definitely. Um, so that finished Rothgar finally after a fairly long time. And now I have started uh, Dark Brotherhood. But uh, I'm going to save all what I've done because I haven't done a whole lot. Like I've literally, I've just started. I picked up, I got far enough to get the uh, the Blade of Woe. And that's about it. Ugh, mm-hmm. cat hair. Ugh, <laughs> in my mouth. <laughs> Yuck. Yuck. Ugh, so, uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, that's a little... this cat, I tell you. I love people who watch this live. They get to see me digging in my mouth for a cat hair. This is gross. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Guess that is going to end our tales section. Uh, let's yep. see here, real quick. Is there anything else I need to mention? No, I think I mentioned it all already. So, Ark, what's going yeah. on in the news? All right. So we have a couple quick dimensions and couple news that we'll mention. So. First quick to mention is the release date for Clockwork City DLC. It's going to be released on 23rd of October for PC and Mac and 7th November for consoles. So as usual, consoles are going to get it like a couple of weeks later. Right. But those are the given time. So basically like this Monday, I think. Yeah, this Monday is for PC and Mac Clockwork City DLC release. Oh, like like tomorrow yeah. as of no, when Monday. We're... Oh, we are on keep... Friday. <laughs> yeah, we're on Friday. <laughs> ah. Okay. I'm kind of okay with this because I'm off for the next week. So Ooh, That's that's a good coincidence. Yeah. 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 Going to First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my work email so I'm not even tempted to look at it and uh yeah. <laughs> See, that's it. It's going to be a week of housework and gaming, hopefully. So Nice. Yeah. So the Clockwork DLC will be available for 2,000 crowns uh, individually, but if you buy the bundle, it will be 4,000 crowns, which is generally the zone DLC price. Like it's, it's not changing much in that sense. Right. The other thing is, um, just as today, like um, 10 a.m. today, well, at least today when we go live, um, the Witches Festival event has started as well. Um, It's the same as last year. You kill any world boss. Actually, there's a list. I'm just going to um, let you know what they are. Uh, All boss monsters... Such as world bosses, Dell bosses, group dungeons, public dungeons, trial arenas, dark anchors, will drop plunder skulls, which are basically like uh, loot boxes in game. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also during the throughout the event, you can activate a. Um, let me see from Crown Store what it is called, a crow color, and it will give you, hundred percent extra experience. Yep. Uh, The things that are included in Plunder Skulls are uh, Hollow Jack motif pages, uh, a rune box containing either of the Pumpkin Spectre Mask, Scarecrow Spectre Mask, Hollow Jack Spectre Mask, Thicket Man Spectre Mask, I don't know what that is, um, Witches Festival themed recipes, furniture and furniture recipes, motif style items, and then assortment of creepy items such as worms, crawlers, guts, and other goodies which are useless. So, were you going to say something? No, that sounds about right. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are also Witches Festival, like Halloween themed items in the uh, Crown Store, which you can check. They're also listed under Crown, like October Crown Store Showcase. Um, other than that, yeah, that's basically what the Witches Festival is about. You can just camp up one boss and 
you will get one plunder skull every time that boss respawns, so that's like every five minutes, and that's the limit on it, so even if you kill like ten bosses within one minute, it won't matter, you need to, it has a cooldown of like five minutes, so that's just a tip that... Um, yeah. Just a another another thing just for Tails, uh, one of our co-hosts here, Nate A.K. Misa, just hit legend rank in the Elder Scrolls Legends card game. He just sent me a text message. <laughs> Ooh. So congrats to him. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, I had to say congrats. So when he listens to this, he'll hear it. I literally picked up my phone, looked at it, and he sent me a text message saying he hit legend. So congrats. <laughs> See, you gotta you gotta challenge him. Your oh, RNG. No, 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 no not with his back. build. He sent me pictures. <laughs> no, 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 no. He sent me a picture just before this where he killed a guy. He had over a hundred health. What? Yeah. Is that even possible? Yeah, he had a hundred health by the end of that fight. Wow. All right. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm like, no, 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 not gonna, it's gonna happen. happen. No. No, definitely not. A hundred. <laughs> it was like a hundred and six health when he di- delivered the final blow against the guy. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, you start the game with thirty health. Yes. So he basically has more than triple his health, more than triple his starter health when he started the match. So I don't, I don't know what he did. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So congrats, congratulations, Nate, on reaching legend rank. That's really cool. <laughs> I'm so glad I have not been matched up against you. On that build. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll so, continue news. Yeah. <laughs> So those are those two were the quick dimensions. Now we have a couple news about Clockwork City, mm-hmm. which are basically long articles. If you want to read, they are um, well. They will be in the show notes. Yes, they will. So, um, so first one is introducing the Asylum Sanctorium, which is the trial of uh, the twelve man trial that is coming with Clockwork City. Now there is. We actually talked about this briefly, but there is one thing I want to mention again, because this is a new, like they, it literally says a new type of trial. Um, basically, there are three bosses, but you only have to kill one of the bosses. But uh, you can adjust the difficulty by either leaving the other two alive when you face the first boss, or um, like killing them one by one, because... I'm just going to read this. There are two other bosses in Asylum Sanctorium, Sane Felms and Sane Lilothis, Mm -hmm. and either one can be fought individually in any order. However, if you so wish, you can skip one or both of them and go straight for the clockwork monster known as Saint Olms, but be warned, if you skip one or both of the first two saints, you'll have to deal with them and Saint Olms at the same time. So basically, if you don't kill them one by one, you'll have to make it more you you'll be making it more difficult by fighting all of them together at the last boss this hmm. trial also brings new re- ultra rare rewards which are called asylum weapons and special rune boxes so asylum weapons basically are like master or milestone weapons which are very difficult to get but provide provide uh, specific weapon abilities like buff buffs to specific weapon abilities um I'm not going to go into too much detail, but there is an example here. For example, you could find a two-handed asylum weapon with the Disciplined Slash bonus that provides additional ultimate when you use the Reverse Slash ability. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that kind of thing. The article is about triple the size of what I just mentioned, so if you want to read the whole thing, you can go ahead and do so. I'm just not... It would be boring to read the whole thing here, so still yeah, to skip we'll the rest. we'll put it in the yeah. uh, in the notes, so you can definitely mm-hmm. check that out there. So awesome! So the other, yeah, <laughs> I mean, we, I haven't done in trials in a very long time, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I still haven't done the um, the one with the Morrowind expansion. Oh, um. Of yeah, house house of fabrication. Yep, I haven't either. We should we should get back in. Well, we can't get back into Wings of Fate trial runs because let me check the the Discord. 
Well, actually, the raid group is empty, but it, it is also possible that they just disband it because it's been hour and a half. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, there's a good <laughs> chance they've already finished it, but there's like yeah. 24 people online right now, so they might have had enough. I don't know. Yep. Uh, but out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, Oh, there's plenty of champion rank people, so I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's possible that they just, like, completed the run and disbanded. Uh, Smirchy says, no raid tonight, we didn't finish it. Ah, okay. Okay. Didn't start even. <laughs> I guess they <laughs> didn't have enough people. Uh, awesome. who wanted maybe to, like to, people to might be, uh, you know, farming it, skull, plunder skulls. Yeah. So. Anytime there was a, anytime there was a holiday event, getting any kind of scheduled guild events, regardless of what game you play, is almost nigh impossible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one, everyone's like, no, nope, I gotta make sure I get my, uh, my plunder skulls or whatever my event is. So everyone, mm -hmm. no one's gonna want to do anything. So <laughs> it makes sense. Okay. So, the other point in the news is the transmutation, which is, again, an article of the same style introducing transmutation. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to quickly, I'm quickly going to go over the main <coughs> things, like what items can I transmute? All armors and all weapons, so no jewelry. Uh, includes items such as Asylum, Master, Milestone, Weapons, Monster, Masks, Weapons, Armor, Drops from uh, Trials and Group Dungeons. Basically, everything that isn't jewelry, you can retrade. Also, yeah, that transmutation system is retrating. Like, you can change the trait of an item. Right. That's what it is. Um, but, how do I... Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's exactly why I was like, yeah, that's why I started getting rid of all the gear that I had in my bank, because if it had all sold, I'm like, yep, I'm selling it, you know. And like before, uh, if you, you, you basically, for PvE, most of your item needed to be divines, and if it's not divines, you basically trashed it. Yes. Now, if it's like training, which is one of the most useless um, traits in the game, um, you can just retrate it. Yep. And how do I transmute an item? How do I retrate an item? Uh, you'll need the following access to a transmutation station. Uh, the desired trait researched for the specific item. So if you want to make a powered sword, you have to know the powered trait for the sword. So you still need a master crafter or be a master crafter yourself to actually um, do this. Or just go ahead and tr like research the trait that you mostly need. <laughs> Which is like divines and sharpened most of the time, I guess. And are and precise from time to time. But yeah, yeah the yeah. divines in, in pen, and mm -hmm. if you're a tank, maybe some sturdy or reinforced. But after, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't need to go the full. It's very easy to get up to like, I think it's six traits. You can do that within like a week or two. Yep. It's after yep. that that it slows down exponentially. So, yeah, I mean. It's not hard to get what you need. Mm -hmm. So the last thing you need is obviously the transmutation crystals. Um, transmutation stations can be found at the heart of the Brass Fortress in Clockwork City, or you can purchase one for your home. Uh, I don't know how much it will cost, though. It's probably uh, going to be tied uh, to Master Ritz, I would mm -hmm. imagine. Well, it says... Um, you can purchase a personal transmutation station for your home from Rolls Lalu, the mastercraft merchant yep. found in each faction's capital city. Yep, that's the guy who you sells via Master Writ. So you need the Writ vouchers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so here it says, finally when you transmute an item, you'll need to spend transmutation crystals in order to do so. These real crystals can be found can only be earned from certain activities such as daily dungeon quest pledges or from completing arenas. Actually, there is a full list which I'm going to um, read. Where can I get transmutation crystals? Guaranteed drops. So these are like 100% you are going to get one. Random daily looking for groups. So random daily dungeon finder. Undaunted pledges. Trial weekly quests. Arena, Trial, and Battleground leaderboards. Alliance War Campaign and rewards. Your first rewards of the Worthy in a day. So, that this is good. 
Mm -hmm. Milestorm yeah. Arena, Veteran Mode only, and Dragon Star Arena, Veteran Mode only. So you can get guaranteed drops from both PvE and PvP. Still, we don't know how much you will get. Like, for example, your first Rewards of the Birdie, will this give 1 or will this give 10? I don't know. Right. Um, chances to drop, like there's a chance to drop once, Dungeon Final Bosses, Rewards for the Birdie Males after your first for the day, and Random... LFGs after your first. So from what I can tell, like there is a lot like it won't be too rare, but it really depends on how much you will need to transmute one item. Right. Yeah, no, if you need like a thousand, yeah, that's that's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be up there. Oh, okay, here it says. The amount of transmutation crystals you can receive also varies with the activity. Some activities will only reward one crystal, while others, such as the rewards of the worthy, can reward you with many more. So it's a bit of RNG there as well. Right. Well, again, it still matters. Uh, well, you know, I'm thinking to myself, like, yeah, the, there's RNG to it, but how many do you need in order to successfully do a transmutation that's the mm -hmm. important part you know if it's yeah. not a lot it's not so there are three questions that i'll go quickly over as well can i transmute items for my friends no when you transmute an item it will be bound to you so that's i can't ask ag to transmute an item for me i have to actually do it myself which i um, feel like is kind of a missed opportunity to give people who did a lot of crafting like exactly. meaning now you're like well i can't do it for you anyway so the reason for this might be that they are planning to put those cr uh, crystals into the crown store though maybe i don't know still doesn't really make sense but yeah like i tried justifying it but didn't really happen <laughs> yeah uh scott says i found a sitting in a dressing in dressing room that is open that is to open it anytime you go into Windows or something like that. If I, ah, oh, it's probably about your. Statement. Yeah, the the one add-on I have. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I was. I have to look for it. I know there's a a setting in there that you can either hide it or, or not. So, mm -hmm. but, yeah. Uh, I can I transmute item for my other characters? Yes, you can. Basically, it's like any bound item you can put it in your bank and things like that. Yep. Do I have to own the Clockwork City DLC? Uh, no, but the only public transmutation station is in Clockwork City. So unless you don't buy one or have a friend that has the station in his house or anything, uh, you need the Clockwork City DLC. Otherwise, you have to buy it or um, have a friend that has this in his house or something like that. Right. Yeah, that's that's the news. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's see where we're at now. I guess we're up to the point where I have to read, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, which cool. which one is this, by the way? I forgot to open it. This is the thirty six lessons of Vivek Sermon fourteen. This is the fun one. Just be warned that this one has a lot of suggestive material in it. So if you have anyone who's listening who you may not want to hear this, you may want to turn it, you know, stop listening to the podcast now. So just be forewarned. So this is the 36 lessons of Vivek, Sermon 14. Vivek lay with Molek Ball for 80 days and eight, though headless. In the time, the prince placed the warrior poet's feet back and filled them with the blood of Daedra. In this way, Vivek's giant form remained forever harmless to the good earth. The pomegranate banquet brought many spirits back from the dead so that the sons and daughters of, of the Union had much to eat besides fruit. The Duke of Scamps came while the banquet was still underway, and Molag Ball looked upon the seven penance of anger. The king of rape had become necessary and therefore troubled for the rest of time. 
His legions and Kautas fell into open war, but the children of Molig, Bal, and Vivek were too elaborate in power and form. The Duke of Scamps therefore became a lesser thing, as did all his own children. Molig, Bal said to them, You are the sons of liars, dogs, and wolf-headed women. They have, beco- uh, they have been useless to summon ever since. The Holy One returned at last, Vec, golden with wisdom, his head found his body uh, had been tenderly used. He mentioned this to Molagbal, who told him that he should thank the barons to, of move like this, for I have yet to learn how to refine my rapture. My love is accidentally shaped like a spear. So Vivek, who had a grain of I am's mercy, set about to teach Molag balls in the way of belly magic. They took their spears out and compared them. Vivek bit new words into the king of rapes so that it might give more than ruin to the uninitiated. This has since become a forbidden ritual, though his people still practice it in secret. Here is why. The Volothian demons and monsters that were watching all took out their own spears. This was much more biting and the earth became wet. And this was the last laugh of Molag Ball. Watch as the earth shall crack, heavy with so much power that should have been forever unalike. Then the stretch of badlands that had been The sight of the marriage fragmented and threw fire. And the race is no more, but that was terrible at the time to behold come forth, born of the biters, and that is all that they did. And they ran amok across the lands of Veloth, even to the shores of Red Mountain. But Vivek made his spear a more terrible thing, from a secret he had bitten off from the king of rape. And so he sent Molagbal tumbling into the crack of the biters and swore forever that he would not deem the king beautiful ever again. Vivek wept as he slew all those around him with his terrible new spear. He named it Muthra, which is milk taker. And even the Chimer mystics knew his fury. Anyone struck by Vivek's at this time turned barren and withered into bone shapes. The path of bones became a sentence for the stars to read, and the heavens had never known their children since. Vivek hunted down every biter one by one and all their progeny, and he killed them by means of the nine apertures, and the wise still held theirs from Muthra. The ending of the words is Om Silvi. I don't think we should go into detail with this one. Probably not. I think a lot of this can be left up to your own imagination as to what exactly they're referring to. Um, but this is actually, it, it is something that is fascinating because of when you're reading this, you're never really sure exactly what you're, he's referring to. Uh, when he refers to his spear, because and throughout a lot of this, you're thinking maybe it's, you know, his <laughs> other spear. But then when you get to the end, you're like, is this a weapon? Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. So this this one's interesting. Um yeah. And obviously one of the more risque sermons that are out there, but uh yeah. Yeah. And if you look at chat, it's like DCN after dark, more <laughs> fan art, ew, icky. The path of bones sword fighting going on. Every the, the entire everyone took out their spears and the world became wet. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> no. It, some 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 weird stuff. There is definitely a lot of uh, suggestive content in that sermon. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we do have one email to read, but my throat is getting really sore. So uh, this is uh, from Jonathan Bird. Uh, we're going to save that till next week. I apologize. It's just a lot to read, and I don't think I can do it right now. So... 
Uh, I guess we're going to end the show here. Ark, what are your final thoughts? No? You still there? I think we're going to have to end the call and re-add it, apparently. Hey, can you hey, hear me? I can now. There we go. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. Um, final thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts. It was, as usual, a fun episode, although I'm not sure about the reading part this time. Well, it was fun, but... <laughs> yeah. It was, it was can, definitely can fun. can't keep it family-friendly like this. It's difficult. <sighs> yeah. With the sermons. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, as I, as I mentioned pre-show, like 36 lessons of Levesque, one sermon each week, that's more than half a year. Yeah. When you think about it. And we've been at it for 14 weeks. And that's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> we've Time flies. got a lot to go. <laughs> a lot still to go. Yep, that's true. So, um, basically, where you can find me, um, anywhere that is Arkanir, that is A R K H A. Oh, wait, can A R K H A N I I R. Um, I stream regularly on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Arkanir. You can contact me at twitter.com slash Arkanir or send an email to Arkanir at gmail.com. I think that's about it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I think that's it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you can follow me at Agelos A G G E L O S underscore W O F. Of course, you can follow me in game at Agelos. Uh, follow everything we do, DungeonCrawlNetwork.com. Find us on all social media: Twitter, Facebook. Um, yeah, all those fun things. Of course, if you want to support us, you can check out patreoncom slash network or of course subscribe to us here on Twitch TV slash network um, help support everything we do here and we really appreciate it thank you so much for listening and we will see you in Tamriel see you later everybody. have a good night everyone when Akatar slew Lorcan he ripped his heart right out he hurled it across Tamriel and the heart was heard to shout red diamond red diamond the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond Protect us till the end The laughing heart sprayed blood afar A gout on seer it fell And like a dart shot to its mark Down in an alien well Magic effused the lork in blood to crystal red and strong Then wild elves cut and polished it down to chimel at a ball Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end when elves lost Nern to men, Akatosh gave the stone To Saint Alesh in token of her right to sit the throne Red diamond, red diamond, the heart and soul of men Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end Red diamond, red diamond, protect us till the end.